What in the world? This bizarre elephant looking tool claims to be the most versatile drill that money can buy. I gotta admit, I'm skeptical. I don't know about this thing, but the reviews on this thing, people are raving about it. My favorite and most used cordless tool. The perfect drill for everything. The only drill you need. Am I missing something here? Let's take a closer look. No, 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 not that close. Back it up. Sure, we'll go with that. This is the Milwaukee 4-in-1 installation drill and driver. It claims to give you unrivaled access and control, but it's not alone. As it turns out, you can buy a very similar 12-volt version of this tool from DeWalt, Bosch, Hilti, and Festool. Not only that, but Festool and Bosch both offer a powerful 18-volt version of this tool as well. Of course, each of these brands and versions has their own pros and cons, but let's take a look at what makes this genre of tool as a whole so unique. To start with, you have all these weird-looking attachments, or heads. But what can you do with all these attachments? Well, anything you want to, really. Their claim to fame is that they allow you to work in tight or difficult to reach spaces, like small cabinets, tight corners, around pipes, and even in those difficult to reach spots around the engine bay of your car. Here's a list of all the uses DeWalt lists for theirs. Drilling holes into wood, drilling holes into metal, hard to reach areas such as cabinets, window or door locks, under sink fastening clamps for hot and cold water lines, as well as hinges. Also, rough in work for plumbing and electrical. Here are some clips that they show of this tool being used in everyday situations by both homeowners and professional contractors alike. Now bear in mind, when you use the keyless chuck that comes with this, it should be able to essentially replace a traditional cordless drill. This is not meant as a standalone item in addition to your cordless drill, but should actually be able to replace it. The same cannot be said for its use as an impact driver. It does have a traditional quarter inch hex chuck here that I can slip on but it does not have an impact mechanism inside the drill. So I'm not going to be able to get the same amount of torque that I'll get from this little guy right here. Same 12 volts, same fuel, same battery, everything like that, but this one has way more torque because of the mechanism on the inside. So is this just another gimmicky tool? I wanted to find out. So I went out and purchased the Milwaukee brand, the DeWalt brand, and the Bosch brand. So I could find out how often I would actually use these, and how do they compare to each other. In the clips we just looked at a moment ago, it makes it seem like you can use these things everywhere all the time. But my question is, how often do you actually find yourself in one of those obscure situations where you need to get right up into a corner, or behind a pipe, or something like that? Maybe it's one of those you don't know what you don't know situations? J. Cole 19 may have said it best when he said, this is my most used tool I have. So light and versatile. Never knew how much I'd enjoy it until I had it. So let's take a look at what these come with. Each of these tools features a fairly similar set of heads and functionality. Each of the drills are pretty standard 12 volt cordless drills. They have all the features you'd expect. They each have two gears on top that you can adjust the speed and torque with. They each have a clutch to allow you to turn down the torque or limit it for more delicate applications and they each allow you to go into full drill mode or drive mode which leverages the clutch. They also each have your standard forward and reverse and lock, though the Milwaukee handles this a lot differently than the other two. Where they differ, of course, is right here in these heads that they each come with. They each have three chucks and a right angle adapter. They each come with a standard keyless chuck, usually with a 3 8 inch capacity, which is pretty standard for a 12 volt drill. They also have an offset quarter inch hex chuck that either has a magnetic or a quick release bit holder in it, and then the quarter inch hex bit chucks themselves. The cool thing here is that the right angle adapter can be used with any of these other chucks and you can put that in any configuration that you like and in any direction or angle. One of my concerns is do I want to sit here swapping out these heads all the time? So let's take a look at a real time speed here of how fast it is to do this. That one goes on pretty quick. These just use a little pull back sleeve here which is really convenient. So they do go pretty quickly, not a big deal, but not all of these are created equal. The Milwaukee functionality is pretty much identical to the DeWalt. You do have less teeth in there, but I feel like it gives you the same amount of versatility or at least pretty similar. I feel like that's actually the fastest one to use here with the Milwaukee. The opposite of that is the Bosch. The Bosch uses what's called a flexi-click system and it uses a lock. So you've got a little lock icon here, right now it's unlocked. 
can put it in and then twist the collet here like that to lock it in place. Now to rotate it, the nice thing is I don't have to take it off, pull it out, move it to where I want to. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the FlexiClick system. I feel like it's just too much work and too cumbersome. So if I want to take that off and put on my keyless chuck, I'm going to find an opening and then click it in like that. It's easy to take them off at least. And then, where is it? Right there. Too much work in my opinion, too much thought. I prefer just a simple sleeve system like the Milwaukee and the DeWalt. Now something else to note is that each of these has a little quarter inch hex adapter right inside the neck here. And with that, they're usually magnetic and so you can use that for cleaner jobs. Let's say you just don't want to deal with the head, you just want to throw something in there and tighten down some screws for electrical work or something like that. Great, you can do that no problem. Now besides all of the different places these can reach, you also have the advantage that you have multiple chucks available at any given time. Let's say you're working on a project where you needed a square drive bit and a Phillips bit and maybe even a traditional drill bit. You can actually load these all up into the different devices, the different heads, and then swap those out pretty quickly as needed. So that is pretty convenient if you want to do that. But that said, I can't help but wonder why wouldn't you just take your quarter inch hex, pop that out, and pop one of these in. Seems a little bit easier that way. Another situation that came to mind is what if you need to pre-drill and then drive some screws? This could be great for that. You've got your keyless chuck here, so I can pre-drill a hole. And then I can just swap out the actual chuck or the head for my quarter inch hex. It's a little awkward, but there we go. Grab a screw and drive it in. So that works pretty great, but then the obvious question there is, most sets come with a drill and an impact driver, like these two guys here, so why not just use those two? Use my drill, and then my driver. So there is a price difference, there's a convenience difference, there's a lot of different aspects to that. So again, that's something that's up to you, what you think is best. On a related note, I keep running into this issue even while I'm trying to do this demo here. I find that this chuck, I don't have a way to loosen it. Um, I can't just turn the body of the chuck. I have to actually take this one off, put this one on. There we go. And then I can loosen it and get the bit out. So don't leave your bits inside the keyless chuck, otherwise you're going to have to remount it to get them out. Another thing that you should be aware of is if you've got all these little parts, these little chucks and heads that you're trying to work with, it might be easy for those to get jostled around or get lost. When I'm working with my drill and driver, when I need to go, I'm just going to toss these in my bag like this, maybe grab a charger if I feel like I might need to charge those batteries on that job, and I'm good to go. That's pretty much that. When it comes to working with these guys, however, these bags are the source of quite a bit of controversy, actually. Between the Bosch, the DeWalt, and the Milwaukee, and again, there are others out there, you're going to get very different experiences from one to the next. If you want to do more, you're going to have to pay quite a bit more for a better experience. More on that in just a second. With the Bosch, I tried to put this back as close as I could, but honestly couldn't remember where things go, and it just doesn't make sense. We've got some elastic Velcro straps. We've got one big, huge one, which I suppose is for the actual unit itself. You've got the charger, you've got some fixed elastic straps here and here, and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on where. The nice thing is, it's a small bag. There's not much to it, so that's kind of nice, but it's just kind of a confusing setup here. So on this one, a lot of people have complained about this one. In fact, I saw some reviews of people saying they'd fire whoever was in charge of the bagging or packaging for this. Again, try to put it back how I found it as best I could. So you've got these little Velcro compartments over here. And these are held on really securely, the main unit is, by a couple of straps if you want it to be. And then you can put your charger and an extra battery in here. Now, the complaint that a lot of people have is that with this, because these are Velcro, things are going to rattle out, especially if you're a pro and you're throwing this in your truck and taking it into a job and that sort of thing. If you're a DIYer, I think you're most likely going to be just fine with this, it's not going to be moving too much. And honestly, th I think for most pros and contractors, it's not bad. Um, and I do like this setup, it's a lot easier to use than Bosch where you're having to find little spots for everything and see what fits where. So not a bad setup, but better still is what DeWalt has done here. We've got our wide mouth bag 
And in here, you've got compartments for everything. They've just put a tray inside their traditional wide mouth bag. I've got a bunch of these bags from a bunch of different tools and I've never seen a tray like this. I'm gonna pop it out just so you can see exactly what they've done here. And now this is not the same as one of the vacuum molded kits, but it's pretty good. I don't think I got this all put back the way it's meant to be because I don't know where I'm supposed to put this. But if you just put these all face down, it works out pretty well. And you can lie that one down if you want. And then I also love this. This drill isn't going anywhere. It's got its very specific spot that it sits in and it's molded right to the shape of the handle, which is pretty awesome. So this works out really well. And then you can just take this whole thing. I keep the instruction manual in the bag in case I ever need to refer to that, but I'm a guy, so I don't. And then I'll just pop the whole thing in and I'm good to go. I like that. If you're interested in a much better way to store your materials, you're gonna have to pay some more. Festool also makes a couple of variations of this, a 10.8 volt and an 18 volt, and they come with these sustainers or system containers. Festool is kind of famous for using these. Everything has its place. Everything's in a nice hard shell and it just is a great way to store your stuff, but you're definitely gonna pay a premium for anything from Festool. They're great products, but they're very expensive. Speaking of paying more, let's take a look at what these things cost. Here's a breakdown of each option with their current list prices, plus their torque rating and what batteries they come with. Some of these prices and configurations are a little surprising. You'll probably notice here that it's hard to compare torque on all of these because DeWalt uses a different unit of measurement. They use UWO or unit watts out, which is basically the combination of torque and speed at certain speeds. So it's really hard to give you a comparison between, for example, the Milwaukee at 300 inch pounds of torque, max torque that is, and then DeWalt at its UWO measurement, which doesn't really compare. It's kind of hard not to see the fact that the Milwaukee chose to go with a whole different form factor from the other drills and from their own traditional drills as well. This enclosed handle here does a couple of things. Number one, it does provide you some nice protection from your fingers from getting slammed into something if the drill bit slips, for example, which, you know, I've never experienced that. I'm sure you haven't either. And then the other nice thing is it's got this nice big strip here that's magnetic for holding your bits and your fasteners. That's really cool. Now, there's some pros and cons here as well. This is a lot of torque in a slimmer form factor here. You can see that this thing is very narrow compared to most drills. Also, Milwaukee uses an all metal keyless chuck, which is really nice. But one of the biggest complaints people have about this particular form factor is the placement of your direction button. This is your forward reverse and lock. It's kind of out of the way unless you're holding it right. Normally, we want to hold it like this. That's how I would by default grab it, but look at where the cutout for your thumb joint is here. You're supposed to hold it up here and use your middle finger and that makes it easier to switch directions like that. That said, I'm not a fan of this. Like I, I like the form factor in general. If they could have just put the little toggle that we're used to for reversing and forwarding your direction right here or worked that out to be a little bit more familiar, I would have definitely preferred that because it's still awkward to put that in here. One other item to mention is that if you're used to using the CP 2.0 batteries, these are the kind that come with it. And this tool is really designed for use with these. It balances, it stands up, it works great. It's easy to remove these. And then if you do, however, want to use an extended battery like this XC here, this is a 4.0, then I'll swap that in there. And now it no longer stands up. So you kind of have to lie it down. And it's also a real pain to try to reach around and get that, squeeze that button to remove that battery. You kind of have to get it, get it from the back here and pull it out that way. What do you think? Is this something that you would be using on a regular basis? And if you own one of these multi-headed tools, how do you use it and is it a good value in your toolkit? As always, everything in my video is linked in the description below if you wanna check those out. You can also use that nifty little shopping bag icon down in the corner and you can get directly to the products that way. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.